This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the startup procedure for the A10C in DCS World. We'll start by closing the canopy with the toggle switch located to the right of the countermeasure system, or with the hotkey control C. We'll also enable battery power and our inverter on the electrical panel. Next, using the four toggle switches for the boost pumps, we'll enable the boost pumps for the left and right main tanks, as well as the toggle switch for the APU. The APU will now begin its startup procedure and finish once its RPM have leveled off at 100. The next step will be to enable the APU generator and the left and right AC generators. These will come online once both engines are running fully, which will supply power to the rest of the aircraft allowing us to turn off the APU. Now that the APU generator is running, we can now start the left engine by moving the left throttle to idle position or by using the hotkey left alt plus home. Glancing over at the caution lights panel, we can see engine start cycle has been activated, indicating the engine has started its startup cycle. Next, enable the CICU and JTRS toggle switches, toggle the IFFCC into test mode, enable the left and right MFCD. Toggle the CDU and EGGY, and select the steer point dial into flight plan mode. Next, glancing back up at the HUD, we can see engage pre-flight pit test since we threw the IFFCC into test mode. We can begin the test by selecting enter on the upfront console. Since we're waiting for the CDU alignment, we have several minutes to engage any other systems, including the countermeasure system, which we'll take a look at next. At this time, we can see the engine start cycle for the left engine has stopped, so we start the start cycle for the right engine by using right control plus home, or by moving the right throttle to idle. By selecting standby in the countermeasure select mode, we can now engage power up, to our four up. channels by enabling the four toggle switches, altitude, and altitude. by throwing the right toggle switch into test mode by right clicking on it, we can enter the program and modify the program as we see fit. Selecting one of the keys located below the LCD display will select the channel located above. For example, selecting the key below chaff will select chaff, selecting the key below interval will select the interval between releases. And edit these values using the select up and down and save them by selecting return. Once you have your countermeasure program set up as you see fit, select the mode of operation you prefer between manual, semi, or automatic. As we take another look at the caution light panel, we can see the engine start cycle has stopped, which means we now turn off the APU and turn off the AP generator, as the left and right AC generators are now powering the aircraft. By selecting OSB 13, titled CDU on the right MFCD, we can double the CDU page onto the right MFCD, which we'll take a look at in a moment. For now, we'll take another look at the HUD. Selecting Enter will exit the bit test. Selecting Exit will exit the test options. And now we can select our consent mode and any other parameters we need. For example, we'd set up the ammo type we're carrying, in this case combat mix. But for now, we'll select the IFFCC back into operation mode by left clicking on it once. Taking a look at the CDU page, the only line we should concern ourselves with at the moment is the T equals line. Currently we had C3.3 and rising. That's the amount of time alignment has been in progress for. It'll finish at 4.0, so it's almost finished. The second value is the order of magnitude of accuracy. Basically, if I start rolling now, it will be 1.6 times less accurate, and this value can go all the way down to 0 0.8, so it will never be 100% accurate. Once the alignment process has finished, 4.0, 0 0.8 will be displayed, as well as INS Nav Ready will be flashing on the CDU console. We select Nav now. 
and we'd see the nav light disappear off the caution light panel. Next, enable anti-skid using the toggle switch located below the left MFCD. Arm the ejection seat. Select the Eggy mode on the navigation mode select panel. Enable Pitch and Yaw SAS. And enable the EAC and radar altimeter switches located behind the throttle. Taking a final look at the caution lights panel, we can see it's finally clear. And now taking a look back at the HUD, pressing insert will engage nose wheel steering. Final step is to select the load all option on the DTS upload page. Radio setup is normally done after starting your APU, but in any event, set the VHF AM and FM to TR mode and set the UHF function to both. Next, hold takeoff trim for a moment to trim the aircraft for takeoff. If you're carrying a TGP Lightning Pod or Mavericks, you may want to cycle power to them while you're on the ground. In this case, select the Data Management Stores page, select OSB2 to access missile, select OSB4 to cycle power to the Maverick systems. Finally, toggle the TGP toggle switch located below the left MFCD.